this is Leah Whitehorse from Lua Astrology with the Cosmic Forecast for September 2014. It's another busy month in the skies and we begin with Jupiter quincunx to Pluto on the 5th of September. A quincunx aspect is one that tends to be associated with irritation. It's a little bit like a thorn in your side. So quincunxes are about two disparate energies attempting to blend, but in order to blend them, adjustments are needed. Jupiter quincunx Pluto may help you to understand where you feel powerless and where you could use more confidence. Maybe you need to stand up and speak your truth. Perhaps there's something you need to let go of in order to feel more joyful. Jupiter Quincunx Pluto can show you where you gain creative expression through losing your fear. If insecurities are plaguing you, it's time to investigate in order to gain a better understanding. Quincunxes can be questioning aspects. If you're not getting the right answers to your questions, then maybe it's time to change the question in order to get a different answer. And do watch for clues from the universe as well, because quincunxes are typically associated with synchronicity and this feeling of fate guiding you. And whilst all this is going on, we move into a transiting yod formation, which is again based on the quincunx aspect. From the 6th through to the 9th of September, the Sun and Vesta will form a sextile to each other, and both of them will quincunx Uranus. The Sun is in Virgo, and Vesta is in Scorpio. The Sun and Vesta are both tuning into this idea of service making what you do into something that has a spiritual focus. It's about finding the sacred in the mundane tasks of daily life. The quincunx to Uranus makes me think that part of this challenge is about being awake, being completely present and in the moment. Can you be spiritually awake whilst putting out the rubbish at the same time? Can you be completely present whilst you're washing up? Part of you may feel like you need to be completely free of all the demands of daily life and housework and day job and all those kinds of things in order to follow your higher calling. But that isn't true because Vesta and the Sun are asking you to stay conscious and be in the present now. By choosing to remain aware and focusing on the task at hand, your higher self can tune into this electric vibration from Uranus so that rather than leaving you stressed or uneasy, you can become more animated and more alive. You don't need to run to the hills in order to find yourself because you're already here. And neither do you have to wait until that uh, strange someday, until you honour the path of the heart. The path of the heart is right now, right here in this moment. And that is where the spark of magic happens. So all in all, whilst the first week of September has some frustrating aspects going on, there is something quite inspirational and transformative at work. We've got a full moon in Pisces on the 9th of September and it's conjunct Chiron and trying to Saturn. Now, Pisces full moon can tend to feel a little bit emotional um, and sometimes it can be quite a confusing time as well. Maybe with the moon conjunct Chiron, you might feel like you're drowning in a sea of emotions. You may be feeling vulnerable and like all your usual guard is down. Perhaps you're waiting for someone or something to come to the rescue. But the trine to Saturn suggests it's time to find your own anchor. When you're feeling confused or overwhelmed, who or what do you turn to? What is it that keeps you afloat? Maybe there's someone else who needs your help. Maybe you want to throw them a lifeline. The caution here, though, is that in rescuing someone else, you may drag yourself down further. Be aware of where you sacrifice yourself in order to save someone else. You don't need to be a martyr. Compassion is a wonderful trait, but giving to the point of exhaustion isn't going to help anybody. Because of the connection to the wounded healer Chiron, this full moon may be a time to get to the bottom of any illness that you've been suffering from. And things like holistic therapies that treat the, the soul as well as the body may be of particular use at this time. 
The full moon is also conjunct the asteroid Polyhymnia and trying to Vesta. Now Polyhymnia was the muse of sacred poetry and sacred hymns, um, but also some say that she's the muse of meditation as well. And Vesta is the goddess of devotion and focus. So a simple meditation practice could provide infinite benefits to your health and your well-being. Mars enters Sagittarius on the 13th of September. Sagittarius is full of enthusiasm and Mars here fires up your own desire for adventure to travel far and wide. Maybe you want to hot foot it off to the sun, sea and sand. Or maybe you just desire some more fun, freedom and frolics in your life. Sagittarius also rules higher education and philosophy, so this is a perfect time to take a course or read voraciously to increase your knowledge of the world. Understanding of other cultures and ways of thinking leads to a feeling of solidarity and heals conflict. As Sagittarius rules belief systems, Mars in Sagittarius can manifest as being on a mission, so you may find yourself with a real bee in your bonnet about how things are meant to be. It's a real crusader aspect. The only caution is that you can't force anyone to come around to your way of thinking. So the best way, instead of wasting your energy, the best way really is just to share what you know and then let them come to their own conclusions. Look to the house in which Mars is transiting in your own chart to see the area of life which is really getting an injection of enthusiasm and passion and energy. It pushes you to formulate your goals and to move at a much faster pace. Whilst this may be wildly exciting, do keep a check on the reins. And this is because on the 22nd of September, Mars is going to move into a square with Neptune. So if you've been hurtling along at full pace, um, this is akin to finding out that your brakes aren't actually working and it can spin you out of control. It's easy to make mistakes under this influence and then get sent off course. So bear in mind too that Mercury will also have entered the shadow zone and because it's going to turn retrograde in October. So there's another caution here to just be aware of where you're going. Alternatively, Mars square Neptune could see you running out of steam. The wonderful vision of how things could be which fired you up and got you all excited in the first place could suddenly seem too idealistic or impossible or just an illusion. So the key here is to slow down, check in with your intuition and that will tell you if you're going in the right direction. The sun enters Libra on the 23rd of September and then we've got a new moon in Libra on the 24th of September. So now the focus is on relationships, justice, balance, compromise, agreement. It's important to weigh up our actions with how they're going to affect others. Whereas the full moon in Pisces felt quite overwhelming and intense, this new moon almost feels remote. And this is because it makes no major aspects to any of the other planets. It's a quiet chart and we've got some breathing space. The ruler of the new moon is Venus and Venus is in Virgo and she's sextile to Saturn. So it gives us a feeling of stability. It means that the little things count in relationships. So value the moment. And it's about mutual appreciation of each other as well. And that goes a long way to forming strong bonds, as does quality time together. Even though this Libra new moon has this quiet chart, it feels full of potent potential. And this is because the new moon is conjunct the dwarf planet Make Make, which is named after the creator god of Easter Island. Now I'm pretty sure I haven't pronounced that correctly, but I do like the play on words, the verb to make. It's about creation and creativity. And this creative potential is again reiterated through the Sabian symbol of this new moon. And the Sabian symbol is the transmutation of the fruits of past experiences into seed realizations of the forever creative spirit. 
the end of the month sees some fiery fun coming into the picture as Jupiter moves into a trine with Uranus on the 25th of September. And these two will shortly be joined by Mars to create a transiting grand trine. And that will form the backdrop to events in the first couple of weeks of October. So I'll be talking more about that in my next video. Jupiter is in Leo and Uranus is in Aries. So there is a feeling of exhilaration when these two meet up. Jupiter and Uranus can denote genius. Sometimes it can connect to new inventions that change the way we live in the world or breakthroughs in science or medicine. Because it involves fire signs, it's a very creative and inspiring aspect. This is all about freedom, liberation, having an expansive and joyous outlook. Most of all, perhaps it's an aspect that reminds you to have faith in the future. Sometimes this trine can denote lucky breaks or a feeling of being in the right place at the right time. Look at where Jupiter and Uranus are transiting in your own chart to see where this energy may manifest and also how to take advantage of it. Jupiter is showing where you need to have faith and where you're expanding in life. And Uranus shows you what you need to change or where you need to do something different. This is the area of life that's being shaken up to inject some fresh energy. So the two together can help you to take a leap of faith. This month I use the Tower of the Old Path. Um, it's one of my favourite decks and the card that came out was the close and in this deck the close is the death card um, but it's not a scary card, it's a card that really illustrates um, this journey of Jupiter quincunx to Pluto at the beginning of the month um, to Jupiter trying Uranus at the end of the month and I think it also captures some of this very creative energy that's around the Libra new moon as well. So in the card, we've got a variety of symbols. We've got the spooky skeleton, the figure of death in the background. And he's just there to remind us that our time on Earth is limited. And therefore, it is important to do the things that you want to do. Also, the scythe of uh, the figure of death uh, links up to the wings of the owl. And the owl is a symbol for intuition. So it's important to listen to your intuition because your intuition is connected to your soul, that part of you that's eternal and unchanging. And we've also got the heron um, just underneath the owl and the heron typically stands on one leg. So it's about self-reliance and knowing that you're strong enough to deal with whatever life sort of throws at you. The more connected you are emotionally and intuitively, so that's the, the water that the heron is standing in, the more aware you are of cosmic time, the less likely it is that change knocks you off balance. We've also got a butterfly there as well. So the butterfly is a symbol of transformation. So what you're experiencing now is a process of change. And then this change leads to new life, which is symbolized by the baby. And the baby is at the foreground of the picture. So this makes me think that it's about celebrating the new beginnings rather than mourning the endings. I think this card really does sum up the phrase, as one door closes, another opens.